But you obviously had a ringside seat to all of this because, John, although most people may not even realize it now, uh, you were the head of SABC election coverage in 1994, as I recall, and uh, you also went on to become a counselor with the IBA. And that, to my mind, is one of the more important aspects, and there's a longer one in this book, too, than the single chapter on Tinker Taylor, Soldier, and almost its by e and editor. Um, and that um, concerns the whole breaking of the first corruption under the, the new regime. And, and the breaking of the first chapter nine body of, of the constitution. The, 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 the chapter nine bodies are supposed to be protected from any political or other interference. And it turned out they weren't. They weren't. Uh, as, as, as you see from the book, broadcasting was the first thing to change, even before 1994, for the obvious reason that it could affect not the result of the, of the election, but how it was covered and how, what quality of debate you would have in the, in the first election. Um, um, and, when, and the same thing happened in the IBA. The Broadcasting Authority was the first to have a corruption scandal after 94, an important one. And what happened there was that the, the, the pressure came from the Ministry uh, of Communications that we must um, push out those people who don't, who, who don't cooperate and, use, use and, and interfere in the, appoint, the process of councillors' jobs, which really was a violation. And of course, then you started to see with the arms deal, the same thing happened with the public protector and so on. But you also, you were in a position, I mean, you don't seem particularly bitter. You seem to have taken it with a great deal of humour. The fact that you were virtually set up for um, being accused of being corrupt yourself by the loss of a file, you duplicated the file at great expense, and it again was not presented to the Auditor General until you barged in, what, you barged into a, a meeting? I had to walk into a meeting of the CEO of the IBA and the Auditor General and personally hand them a, a, a duplicate file that I'd made at my own expense. Left me a little broke, I have to say, um, to say this is the file you've been asking for. I've handed it to the, the management to hand to you. They apparently have not. Here it is. And that's what cleared me. And then you went to Parliament on the basis of that as well. Yes, and, and you know it was a remarkable thing. This was Scopa, the uh, the Select Committee on Pu uh, Committee on Public Accounts in Parliament. It was early days. The ANC members were extremely honourable, uh, Lalu Chiba, uh, uh, Barbara Hogan, and others, and they 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 were appalled at wa the waste of money and the misuse of money, and they really wanted to get to the bottom of it. So it was an extraordinary hearing when and everything came out publicly and. I I was there with the Black uh, Staff Association supporting what I was doing. They wanted to clean up the organization. But the end result of the way the government managed it was that you now have the successor to the IBA, which is ICASA. It's lost a lot of credibility, and it's not doing what it needs to do, which is to build our information economy. Well, what you've done, of course, you've also named names and pointed fingers. I mean, Andile Klava, um, Jay Naidu who then was communications minister, certainly does not come out of it very well. You're going to lose a lot of friends, it looks like. I, I probably will. Uh, I lost friends when I, when I wrote about uh, Tertius Mayberg. There are a few people who are annoyed by that. I think I'm sort of an equal opportunity friend loser. I've, uh, the book really tries to say we have to look honestly at our history and where it criticizes apartheid people, we have to criticize them and, and explains, explain their real roles. And where it, we look at post-1994, you know, it's harder now to fix things because the problems are economic, but we, they're fixable. They're all fixable, Terry, if we prepare to look at it honestly. Well, that's a raise of the one point that really got me in this book, because as you know, I'm quite interested in education was the whole question of looking at education. And you came up with looking at the statistics and were then accused of having too many statistics, I think. What happened there? Well, as you know, um, um, journalists are always told they don't use enough facts, they just use uh, commentary and why don't they get more facts and more statistics. When the um, matric results came out in, in um, 1999, I think it was, uh, uh, Kada Asmal had just become the education minister and I looked at them very carefully and what I realized was that our matric results had declined or every year but one from 1994 to 1995, 99 for five years and it was a significant decline about 25-30% when it should have been going up. And so I went to him and I said, look, these are the figures, what do you say? And I'm not blaming you, you've just become minister, but we need an explanation. And they were determined, I got a message from his office saying he won't comment. Um, so I went with the statistics and then he wrote a scathing 
uh, op-ed piece, opinion piece saying that uh, Mr. Madison is obsessed with statistics. I found it sad because I like Carter Asmal. He's been highly respected by me included. I knew him before um, the end of apartheid and we had a, a positive relationship. But, but you know, the people in government became, uh, perhaps it was hubris, but they began to protect their turf and I think they have to be held accountable. Well, in this case, I mean, so you certainly did hold them accountable, but you, you yourself agree that exams themselves are not any way to judge what is happening. But there is no other way, is there? Yes, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's a perfect system. All I'm saying is that, that the number of people in a position to go to university and, and, and have a career declined significantly in the first five years of of democratic government and and I would have thought for all of us that would be a, the worst news news ever and something we'd want to turn around right away